and welcome to another edition of Onside SA. Budgie, myself and Stevie B, the International Pundit, will be running through a few things that are happening all over the world. We've got the Olympic soccer, we've got our usual MLS and we've got Swedish football today. But Budge, straight on to it, I didn't watch the game, yeah. I don't know if Steve did. Morocco, Argentina. Yeah, I watched the second half, I couldn't believe it. Morocco went tunnel up. And, you know, it was a bit fiery. Morocco, wherever it was boiling, Paul, it was yeah. a bit temperamental. And then it went 2-1, and then the Argies were all over them. Yeah. Mm. And uh, the goal, originally when I watched, I thought, geez, that could be offside. But uh, I went to go and meet someone for a beer, and it was like an hour and a half. Is that right, Steve? How long before the game finished? Uh, it, was, it was close to two hours by the time they took them off and then brought them on again, and then decided that... Uh, you know, VAR decided it was offside. Yeah. So complete and utter, as you said, a real debacle and a shocking look for the uh, football in the Olympics. Yeah, I Especially with the, cra yeah. the crowd trouble. I mean, that's, yeah. you know, unwarranted. And uh, they ended up playing behind, you know, in, in an empty stadium to finish it off. Yeah, the last minute and a half. I couldn't believe because I taped it. And I thought, what is going on here? And uh, Gee. Steve, did you watch any other games? I saw the second half of the France USA, which was quite a, you know, quite a good game. I mean that uh, after France, well, Lacazette is their captain and yeah. played as the overage player, yeah. and then USA had a yeah. had a real purple patch, couldn't quite score, and then after that, uh, Michael Elise scored a, yeah. quite a good goal for them, and then it was all France, and uh, it was three nil when uh, I stopped watching. Steve at the Olympics, France and uh, America drew seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, they it was one of the first the games. France, because they got their great flyer uh, as come off. off. Okay. Yeah. Now, they so, won't win it. Uh, watch no. the All Blacks. They yeah. look, uh, yeah. they look tough to beat. Yeah. Steve, uh, I G see this. GB are not in it. GB are not in the rugby. Because yeah. uh, it's, it's always an issue to put a GB team out when uh, you know, they didn't qualify for some reason. So, yeah. uh, which is a bit bizarre. South Africa. South Africa rubbish going home. The only thing is, is that the, the, the highest two third place teams go through. So if we uh, do beat Japan, well, there you go. It doesn't matter who we, we're not going anywhere. Steve, uh, I see they've allowed three overage players. Don't you think that's a bit farcical? Why? Why, why, why even yeah, happen? It's pointless, especially if they're uh, you know, players like someone like Lacazette, for example, or you know, you know, who are experienced professionals. It sort of takes away you know, what it's meant to be. It's meant to be for younger, up-and-coming players. Yeah. And if they play you know, two or three of those at any one time, it just sort of takes something away from it. But uh, you know, that, those are the rules. You know, I'm, 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 no, it's... It was, I say, the, I saw the second half of the France USA in the football. It was quite a good game. Yeah. Uh, I think Brent, Brendan Aronson was playing for the US. They've got one or two sort of overage players in the team. But uh, you know, France are obviously determined to try and win uh, on home soil, whether they will or not. But you know, they've got a reasonable squad. Uh, squad. Yeah. Anyway, game three, group That's games. Story with all these friendlies yeah. overseas. Steve, uh, oh. we know most of all, a lot of the big Premiership clubs are owned by Americans, but this is becoming a joke. Yeah, they're all going over there to play on pitches. I think, aren't they putting turf over some of these artificial surfaces? I think so, because, uh, you know, obviously the, the English teams are not used to playing on artificial surfaces and, and they're not good, you know, you can risk injury. So, but as, as I said to you earlier, there are 10 English teams out there oh. main, mainly playing each other. It just, uh, you know, other than, other than for money and exposure, you, you, there can't be any real sensible reason why, you know, say Crystal Palace are playing Wolves in Pittsburgh or something. It just, it just sort of uh, seems pointless, really. And, yeah. uh, you know, uh, I know, you know, one or two of the... Uh, again, you know, in the past, we've had a lot of teams used to travel to the Far East yeah, uh, yeah. and Australia, but now, obviously, uh, the money is in the US. Yeah. So these games that you've written out here, these Budge, are the weekend games. They played on the weekend. I know, I know Spurs are playing uh, yeah. on Saturday night, but you've got Liverpool, Real Betis, Chelsea, Celtic. They're all in America. Well, Celtic Man beat yeah. Man City 4-3. I saw the highlights. Uh, Man City, I mean, obviously had so many players involved in the, in the in Euros. Euros. They sent, uh, you know, you've got a, a few experienced players, but mainly it was their sort of under-21 squad. Yeah. Uh, a lot of, you know, and a lot of the, 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 the players who played in the latter stage of the Euros are, are not taking part. You know, they're all having their, you know, deserved couple of weeks uh, holiday. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, um, you know, they're sending sort of, you know, sort of mix and match teams. Obviously, teams like Chelsea, you know, with a big squad, you know, they can uh, they can afford to lose a few and still have a lot out there. Yeah, I see what about you? Arsenal Man United? Arsenal? Where's that plan being played? Uh, is that California, Steve, Arsenal Man United? Yeah, I mean, again, you know, both of them without a few players, Arsenal without a few players, yeah. but... It just seems, you know, and they go through the motions, especially when they're playing in, in real heat. Yeah. Uh, you know, and they sort of, you know, had lots of uh, water breaks. And a lot of it's, you know, I guess they, they'll say it's uh, better than just, a, you know, staying in a, in a wet and windy Britain as we've had over the last few weeks yeah. uh, for some warm weather training. Yeah, Steve, what, uh, I had a look, I was on ESPN, they said there were 20,000 tickets that haven't been sold. The people aren't mugs anymore. Years ago, you would go and watch them. Now they know what squad's coming out. Who the hell wants to watch Man City's under-21 team? Yeah. Haaland was captain. He scored the header, but Celtic were trying for the lives. Man City were going through the motions. It's... It's a joke, you know, and Pep standing well, there trying are, to get... They're, 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 to be fair, they are glorified exhibition games. That's all yeah. they are. Yes, you know, they're, yeah. not, they're not ultra-competitive. Yeah. So, um, you know, I guess if you are a English football fan and you live in the States and, and one of the big teams is coming to your city, then I guess you're going to go and, and watch them. And I think that's obviously what they're, they're hoping for. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's strange, Paul? Man United haven't won the league since they've left South Africa. Fergie always came here to Durban. That's right. He always used to go and see him and have Haven't won the league since. Gee. Maybe we've got to get uh, get them back. But the way we're going. Haven't won the league. Jeez, anyway. <laughs> let's anyway, talk, Steve, you know, let's get on to the League's Cup, which is uh, the competition yeah. between the American and uh, Mexican leagues. And you're a bit concerned that some of these teams may rotate. Is that right, Steve? You worried? Uh, well, are you rotating? We just don't know. Look, first of all, all the games are being played in the US, so no. the US teams have got home advantage. There's no question. Although in in some of the venues, particularly down in the southern states, there'll be huge numbers of Mexican fans. Yeah, but we just yeah, we just don't know at this stage whether either you know the teams from either of the leagues are going to be sort of rotating and sort of uh, giving their squad players a game. We just don't know. How yeah. serious that uh, they're going to take it. So, you know, until we see really the first round of matches or so and see if there's any real shocks because yeah. they've left. You know, it's whether or not, for example, you know, if Messi was fit or, or the others, would they play for Inter Miami at the beginning of this competition? We just don't know yet. So, yeah. well, the thing uh, is, that but again, 15 uh, groups, of, I said 14 groups of three, I think it is. And uh, the top two goes through, and there were two teams, the finalists from last year got automatic into the last 32. So I think that's how it works. But anyway, Steve, we, we can do nothing, unfortunately. But the first game up, 8-10 to 10, Orlando City against Montreal. Steve, good things, the home yeah. team. Yeah, you would think so. Uh, Orlando having a reasonable run, strong yeah. at home. I would expect them to, to win that. All right. What about Atlanta versus DC United who have won their last two? Yeah, I mean, DC have had a little bit of uh, a, a resurgence. But again, Atlanta at home, I think, probably be a little bit too strong. I think it'll be close, but I think uh, home team there. That's our man, Paul. Onside Ben Teke. Ben Can he? Teke. Yeah, he scored the other day. Can't <laughs> believe it. Steve, one of the better Mexican teams that are playing this week are Pumas. I know they're away from home against Austin, but I fancy them. Do you agree? Yeah, Pumas are, are one of their strongest teams. Yeah. Um, you know, look at the form guide. Uh, you know, they've won, I think, sort of four of the last six. Um, again, Austin won't be an easy uh, game for them playing away in Austin, but they'll have huge support. And I think, this, as you say, this could be one of the closer games uh, of the two. Yeah, I fancy the Pumas of all teams, the Argentinian Pumas and the rugby, but I fancy the Mexicans there. Steve, I can't believe Seattle are 11 at 10 to beat a struggling Minnesota. Do you? Uh, no, for me, I think Seattle should be uh, clear favourites for this one. I know Minnesota won last week, but they've had a terrible run away from home. I, I fancy Seattle. Yeah, I totally agree. Five wins and one defeat. And that was the top of the league, Los Angeles. 11 of 10, I think good things. Los Angeles, your second favourites alongside into Miami to win this, Steve. Hard Tijuana. to beat. Tijuana. Yeah, no, I think so. Uh, again, you know, be a big crowd, a lot of Mexicans. Tijuana just over the border, and, you know, a lot in California, but I think Los Angeles should be too strong. Yeah, they want to... Steve, you been to Tijuana? I haven't been to Tijuana, no. I've been to Tijuana. You must remember when I worked in America, 
below, that's where the border comes. You go yeah. to San Diego, then you get the border, and you go through to Rosarita Beach in Tijuana. I danced in front of mariachi bands there <laughs> in my youth. Well, I tell you, who'll be dancing in front of a new mariachi band will be Messi if he plays. <laughs> Steve, into Miami at home. Obviously, five to ten at home against Puebla. Good yeah, things. Yeah, uh, they should be too strong. I think whatever team they put out, Miami, yeah. they'll be too strong. Yeah, they can't concede. I saw the highlights the other day. We went over three and a half goals in the game. How there was it? Six goals, I don't know, but five to ten should be in all your bets. Philadelphia have won their last two, Steve, against Charlotte. Can they make it three in a row? Yeah, I mean, Charlotte, look, I mean, Charlotte have, yeah. have uh, upset the apple cart a little bit recently, had some good results, but Philadelphia have had a couple of really good home wins, yeah. so, you know, I think they'll start as favourites, but it, it should be pretty close. Yeah, they had a good run in the last competition, I think they got to the semis. A team that I can never catch, Steve, in Boston's New England, do you, ex you see them winning there? Uh, yeah, I think so, I think they will win, I think they'll probably be a little bit too strong. Yeah, the Zatlin four league games in the Mexican League, only one point from that, losing three away, but yeah, yeah. New England, they're playing an artificial pitch, but you never know with these Mexican sides. Steve, I fancy the Red Bulls to beat Toronto, do you? Yeah, I think so. Uh, Toronto, you know, not having a great season, I think uh, Red Bulls should be too strong for them. Yeah, I totally agree. A game I think will be closer than the betting is, Steve. Houston at home to Atlas? Yeah, Atlas not a bad side, but Houston have had some good results recently, so uh, I, I think that they might just be a little bit too strong for them. Yeah, just difficult when we don't really know the, the Mexican side. On to our final page of the League's Cup, and we've got St. Louis at home against Dallas. Steve, how do you see it? Yeah, I mean, both uh, Will St. Louis uh, have been struggling. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if uh, Dallas maybe, you know, gets something out of the game. Yeah, I think if ever there's a game that looks like a draw, it's definitely this one. Guadalajara against the home side of San Jose, who've cost me in recent weeks, Steve. How do you see it going? Yeah, well, San Jose have had a, overall, had a shocking season. Yeah. I mean, still the uh, the bottom ranked team. Guadalajara have had, uh, are a decent, you know, if you look at their last uh, few results, they've done quite well. I think if there was to be a, Me a Mexican team to win, I, I fancy Guadalajara. San Jose, nine defeats in the last ten Whoa. in the MLS. Steve, I can't believe New York City are six to ten. I know they don't score too many goals, but I fancy them here. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think they'll be too strong. Curitaro. Uh, sporting Kansas City, who cost me last week. They were my best bet. They ended up drawing against Chicago. Shakiri's back in form, Steve. 28 to 10, an upset. Yeah, it could be. You know, I think that uh, I think I think I think you're right. I think there could be an upset with this one. Yeah, and the last but not least, Steve, I can't believe Portland are thirteen to ten against Leon, especially seeing the game is in Portland. You know, Gary Neville's team, sorry, Phil Neville's team done great at home, won the last four. I think thirteen to ten is worth a bet. Do you think do you do agree? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Leon are a, are a decent side and obviously uh, in the final last year. Yeah. But uh, not having a great season. I don't think they, they haven't won in, in four, but I think Portland at home should be too strong. Yeah, just having a look at the betting. Uh, Club America were 8-1, to one, Inter Miami 9-1, to one, Columbus Los Angeles 12-1 to one, and Cruz Azul 12-1, to 18-1 to one bar. So, just never know. But it's nightmare to have a bet into that. Anyway, on to Sweden, Steve. A team that won for the first time, I think, in 10 was Nord Kopping at home against Kalmar. How do you see it well, going? Well, look, you know, they're, they're still bottom of the league. Uh, you know, maybe that will give them a bit of confidence. Kalmar, not, you know, considering how well they did last year, not having a good season. You know, I, I, I could see maybe Kalmar getting something there, though. You know, as you say, they'd only won one in 10, Nord Kopping. I'm not sure they deserve to be clear favourites. Yeah, both teams have scored six of 10 is the way to go. The team who closed my count last week was IFK Gothenburg. How they were 11 minutes injury time, they conceded in the eighth. Felt like puking against Bromma Pochkana, Steve. I think they'll get back to winning ways, IFK Gothenburg. Do you agree? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think so. I mean, uh, neither having a great season, um, but I think the home side probably just about edge it. Yeah, I fancy them all day long. And Malmo, another team that played in the Champions League in midweek, won 4-1 yeah. at home. Too strong for Sirius? 
I think they will be. I think the betting, you know, reflects uh, where they both are, and I think that uh, Malmo should win that. Yeah, seven home league games definitely makes a one to four shots. Homestead against IFK Venamo. Stevie fancy Venamo last week. I'm surprised they 12 to 10 here. Yeah, I was looking yeah, at in, you know, in the end, uh, didn't quite do as I thought, but uh, maybe IFK might might just. Uh, do enough to, to win that. Yeah, this is another game where both teams to score over two and a half goals is even money. That's my suggestion there. On to our final page in this week's show. We've got Hammerby against Mjolby. Mjolby. Yeah, I mean, I was on Hammerby the other week and they let me down. Yeah. Mjolby having a reasonable season. I think it's to be quite, I think there'll be goals. I think it'll be a close game. Wouldn't be surprised if they uh, cancel each other out. Yeah, of the two teams, I like him, Jolby. And last week, your best bet, Steve Elfsborg, rewarded the boys. 5-3, yeah, they beat him, Jolby. They yeah. play tonight in the uh, Europa uh, League. Yeah, I, li yeah, yeah. I like Elfsborg. I think they're a decent side, and yeah. I, I think they'll, they'll be too strong. Yeah, six home league wins in a row. 14 to 10 is a fair price. Joe Garden playing the Champions League. I think it's tonight, yeah. so be careful. But Elfsborg, yeah. all day long. BK Hack and Steve, I think they'll destroy Vesteris. What do you think? Yeah, they should do. Um, obviously, they you know they conceded a lot to Elfsburg a couple of weeks ago, but, yeah. but you know Vesteris is not having a good season. And I think uh, Hacken should be too strong for yeah. them. Only concern is they do play in the Champions League tonight, so maybe their eyes are set on that. And last but not least, ARK Stockholm against Gaze Gothenburg. Now Gaze beat them two 0 on Monday night at home. Do you see them uh, getting another victory there, Steve, or siding with them? It doesn't always, yeah, but it doesn't always work, does it? You know, yeah. it's, sometimes teams don't beat the same team twice in the, you know, the week. And I think, obviously, being at home, I wouldn't be surprised if they at least hold them. Yeah, stranger, uh, Stockholm, five of the Stranger's seven, just... one five of the last seven, but away from home, they've been terrible. But it's amazing, nine to ten, a bit short for me, but uh, of the two, you know, I like Gaze Gothenburg to win a game, yeah. Anyway, Steve, pressure time as always. Uh, your best bet and value bet, please. I'm going to go as my best bet. I think I'm going to go for Seattle. I think I, I think they should be too strong at home. Yeah. And uh, my value bet, I'm going to uh, take a punt. I'm going to go on Guadalajara. I think that uh, you know they might it's a cause an upset against San Jose. Yeah. Well, I'm on uh, Orlando City, and I'm going for the Pumas. That's the my Pumas. Uh, the Pumas, yeah. Hopefully, there's a couple of those rugged Argentinians in the camp. But uh, yeah, very difficult this week, Steve. You know, I think the final will be on ESPN. The only league that's on now that I've been watching is uh, Belgium. I watched the superb game last week, okay. Club Bruges against Union Saint Gaulois, two one. Humdinger of a game. <laughs> we don't we don't get the we don't get that at all here. But uh, yeah. you know, inter interesting that they've started the Belgian league has started. Uh, yeah, it's you know, it's playing week. now. But yeah. uh, Steve, one thing about them, they score goals. There's no negativity in that league. I don't know if they get paid to score goals, but teams three 0 down, they're having a full go. That's what I like about it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, look, it's still like they've all the, you know the, there's a. Quite a few decent teams in the Belgium League. Yeah. Obviously, produce good players that uh, you know that we see in the Premier League. You know, like the Andalex and Stanley Ages. Yeah. Um, so you know, over the years, they've been uh, decent teams in Europe. Yeah. No, I just watch it because there's been nothing on, and there was a cracker of a game, two-one last week. So some nice players. Well, someone was telling me that uh, an England Premiership club bought. I think it could have been Brighton, bought uh, Club Bruges centre forward. So it'll be interesting to. Yes. Is that, yeah, was, it, uh, was it Brighton? Is it Brighton? No, or was it? Was it the Brighton or Brentford? One of them. Yeah, um, it could have been Brentford. Who's the boss at Brighton? Yeah, Tiago, I think. Tiago. As a new guy, Tiago. Yeah. Uh, Steve yeah, uh, yeah. Paula, he's the boss at Brighton. They've got a. It's a youngster there now, isn't it? It's young or younger? Young, yeah, young manager. I don't, I don't, to be honest, I don't know much about him. You know, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, you know how they do. It's. Uh, but you know, Brighton, uh, they do that. You know, they bring it. They bring in. You know, managers that you don't really know. Uh, so, I mean, no one really knew Robert De Zerbi that that well. Yeah. Although, you know, he, he didn't get the big club. But I think that people that uh, he was being uh, touted touted He's for. Marseille, isn't in he? The end. Yeah, you know, you thought that. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, they're a decent side, but they're, you know, at large in France. But you know, they're not one of the big European teams. That I think that uh, he was being linked with at one point. But you know, Brighton fell away quite a bit, and I wonder if that just uh, yeah, that's uh, you know, the fact that he's standing. Yeah. yeah. 
Anyway, Steve, thanks, thanks as much. always. We'll speak yeah, over the pleasure. weekend. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, cheers. Yeah. Bye, bye, bye. Yeah, on to our Saturday soccer exotics, and uh, they'll come up now. Our first one is a soccer six, and uh, once it goes, it's I've gone. Uh, the away side, the guys can enlarge it, please. Yeah, I've got Mitchell and win and draw at Nords Jarland. The field in the beer shot, Vulrock versus OH Leuven, Belgium game. I'm going the field in the Wolves, West Ham United, friendly in America. Bankering, Anderlec to beat St. Truden. Sligo Rovers to beat Galway United. Oh, and Japan under 23, I don't see them losing uh, to Mali in the Olympics, 2-1-6. On to the second, soccer six. I'm going Chelsea win and draw against Celtic. The field in the Argentinian match between San Lorenzo and Newell's Old Boys. Bankering Juventus to beat Criciúma in Brazil. The field in the Arsenal-Man United game. Philadelphia Union to avoid defeat at home against Charlotte. And banking the New York Red Bulls to beat Toronto, 2-1-6. On to the soccer 10, I'm going Japan, win and draw against Mali. Chelsea, win and draw against Celtic. The field in the San Lorenzo, Newell Old Boys game. Juventus to be too good at home for Krikiuma and chancing Man City to beat AC Milan. On to the second page, I'm going the field in the Arsenal Man United fixture. Philadelphia Union to avoid defeat at home against Charlotte. New York Red Bulls to beat Toronto and Fortaleza to be too good at home against Sao Paulo and last but not least St. Louis City win and draw against Dallas 288. On to the soccer 13 for Saturday I'm bankering IFK Gothenburg against Bromma Pajkana, Malmo to be too good at home against Sirius, Halmstad win and draw against IFK Venamo, Chancing Frederikstad to win in Norway at home against Rosenburg. Going with Bodo Glimt to avoid defeat at KFUM. And Michelin win and draw at Nordsjaland. And Lugano in Switzerland win and draw against Basel. On to our second page. I'm going Grasshopper Zurich win and draw at home against Lucerne. Siding with Lausanne Sport win and draw against FC Sion. Anderlecht to be too good at home for St. Truden. Going for OH Leuven win and draw at Beershot Volrak and two bankers. In Finland we're going HJK Helsinki to be too good for AC Ulu. And on to Norway, the first division. Stabag to beat Moss FK 2.56. On to our budgies bets for the weekend and a big bit of a licorice all sort, guys, but we've got to have a dip here. I'm going Orlando City and New York Red Bulls. Orlando City to beat Montreal and New York Red Bulls to beat Toronto. And into Miami and Seattle. Into Miami against Pueblo and Seattle against Minnesota to win and both teams to score in each game. 5,000 to 200. On to Sweden, I'm going Malmo to beat Sirius and both teams to score. Augsburg to beat Jurgarden and over one and a half total goals and over two and a half goals, both teams to score in the ARK Gaze Gothenburg clash, 2,200 to 200. On to Belgium, where I'm going Club Bruges and Union Saint Gaulois, the guys that finished one and two last, last week, to beat Mechelen and Denda by more than one goal. And then over two and a half goals in the Andelec St. Truden Sporting Charleroi Antwerp match, 2,000 to 200. Our team goals only, I'm going Orlando City, New York Red Bulls and Portland, all to score over one and a half goals, and Seattle to score over two and a half goals, 3,200 to 200. In America, we're staying in the league, I'm going <coughs> over two and a half, both teams to score in the Atlanta DC United. Pueblo into Miami, Sporting Kansas City, Chicago, and Philadelphia Charlotte games. That worked out at 2,000 to 200. And our Collis King six or Nixa. I'm going Orlando City to beat Montreal, into Miami to beat Pueblo, Seattle to beat Minnesota, Club Bruges to beat Mechelen, Union Saint Gaulois to beat Denda, and BK Hacken to beat Basteros, 3,000 to 200. Tough, tough. Yeah, Paul, it's hard when you can't watch them, Paul. You're just going to look at stats, and yeah. we don't know the teams, and the, yeah, it's just difficult. So. Very difficult, I can it's imagine. Gonna... But don't forget, 
The British Premier League is going to be starting soon. The Championship starts on the same day as the Community Shield, which is a week before it. Last one standing will be running. Very interesting. A lot of money being poured into new players, especially your club budget. Yeah, Paul, we've offloaded a few, but we need, we've got no spine, Paul. We need a goalkeeper, centre-half, which we've signed. Another central midfield player. They're talking to Gata. I think he's a guy from uh, PSG. And we signed a striker. That's Xerxes from Bologna, but... Let's see, Paul, premierships are a lot tougher than these other leagues. You, you retained your boss. <laughs> yeah. Just to make Budgie's day. Can, can he improve? Paul, we can't get any worse. I haven't seen improvement. We've won two cups. Yeah. The League Cup and FA Cup, so that's in his favour. But I don't yeah. think he sees Christmas Day. That's my yeah, opinion. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I don't think he knows what he's doing. But that's, that's what's happening and uh, a lot to look forward to. Yeah. Until next time, stay on side.